This is the story of Thumbelina, part one. There was once a woman who wished very much to have a little child, but she could not obtain her wish. At last, she went to a fairy and said, I should so very much like to have a little child. Can you tell me where I can find one? Oh, that can be easily managed, said the fairy. Here is a barley corn of a different kind from those that grow in the farmer's field and that the chickens eat. Put it into a flower pot and see what will happen. Thank you, said the woman, and she gave the fairy 12 shillings, which was the price of the barley corn. Then she went home and planted it, and immediately there grew up a large handsome flower, something like a tulip in appearance, but with its leaves tightly closed as if still in her blood. It is a beautiful flower, said the woman, and she kissed the red and golden colored leaves, and while she did so, the flower opened, and she could see it was a real tulip. Within the flower upon the green velvet stems sat a very delicate and graceful little maiden. She was scarcely half as long as a thumb and was given the name Thumbelina, or Tiny, because she was so small. A walnut shell elegantly polished served her for a cradle. Her bed was formed of blue violet leaves with a rose leaf for a bedspread. Here she slept at night, but during the day she amused herself on a table where the woman had placed a plate full of water around this plate full of water. Around this plate were wreaths of flowers with their stems in the water, and upon it floated a large tulip leaf, which served Tiny for a boat. Here the little maiden sat and rode herself from side to side, with two oars made of white horse hair. It really was a pretty sight. Tiny could sing so softly and sweetly that nothing like her singing had ever been heard before. One night, while she was laying in her pretty bed, a large, ugly, wet toad crept through a broken pane of glass in the window and looked right upon the table which where Tiny was sleeping under her rose leaf quilt. What a pretty wife this will make for my son, said the toad, and she took up the walnut shell and which lay Tiny and jumped through the window with it into the garden. In the swampy margin of a broad stream in the garden lived a toad with her son. He was uglier even than his mother, and when she saw the pretty little maiden elegant in her elegant bed, he could only cry, croak, croak, croak. Don't speak so loud or she will wake, said the toad, and then she might run away, for she is light as the swan's down. We will place her on one of the water lily leaves out in the stream. It will be like an island to her. She is so small and light, and then she cannot escape. And while she is away, we will make haste and prepare the star room under the marsh in which were you to live when you are married. Far out in the stream grew a number of water lilies with broad green leaves, which seemed to float on top of the water. The largest of these leaves appeared farther off than the rest, and the old toad swam to it with the walnut shell in which lay Tiny asleep. The tiny little creature woke very early in the morning and began to cry bitterly when she found where she was, for she could see nothing but water on every side of the large green leaf, and no way of reaching land. Meanwhile, the old toad was very busy under the marsh, decking her room with rushes of wild yellow flowers to make it look pretty for her daughter-in-law. Then she swam out with her ugly son to the leaf on which she had placed the poor little tiny. She wanted to fetch the pretty bed that she might put in the bridal chamber to be ready for her. The old toad bowed low to her in the water and said, here is my son. You will be your husband, and you will live happily in the marsh by the stream. Croak, croak, croak was all her son could say for himself. So the toad took up the elegant little bed and swam away with it, leaving Tiny all alone to the green leaf where she sat and wept. She could not bear to think of living with the old toad and having her ugly son for a husband. The little fishes who swam about in the water beneath had seen the toad and heard what she said. So they lifted their heads above the water to look at the little maiden. As soon as they caught sight of her, they saw that she was very pretty, and it made them very sorry to think that she must go and live there with ugly toads. No, it must never be! So they assembled together in the water around the green stalk that held the leaf on which the little maiden stood and gnawed it away with their gnawed away at the root with their teeth. Then the leaf floated down the stream, carrying Tiny far away out of reach of land. Tiny sailed past many towns, and the little birds in the bushes saw her and sang, What a lovely little creature, to the leaf swam by with her farther and farther. 
till it brought her to other lands. A graceful little white butterfly constantly fluttered around her and at last delighted on the leaf. Tiny pleased him, and she was glad of it, for the now the toad could not possibly reach her, and the country through which she sailed was beautiful, and the sun shone upon the water till it glittered like liquid gold. She took off her girdle and tied one end of it around the butterfly, and the other end of the ribbon she fastened to the leaf, which now glided on much faster than ever, taking little Tiny with it as she stood. Presently, a large beetle flew by. The moment he caught sight of her, he seized her around her delicate waist with his claws and flew with her into a tree. The green leaf floated away on the brook, and the butterfly flew with it, for he was fastened to it and could not get away. Oh, how frightened Tiny felt when the beetle flew with her to a tree, but especially was she sorry for the beautiful white butterfly that she had fastened to the leaf, for it c he could no longer he could not free himself. He would die of hunger, but the insect did not trouble himself at all about the matter. He seated himself by her side on a large green leaf, gave her some honey from the flowers to eat, and told her she was very pretty, though not in the least like a beetle. After a time, all the beetles turned up their feelers and said, She only got two legs. How ugly that looks. She has no feelers, said another. Her waist is quite swim. Poh, she is like a human being. Oh, she is ugly said all the lady beetles, although Tiny was very pretty. Then the insect who had run away with her believed all the others when they said she was ugly and would have nothing more to say to her, and told her she might go where she liked. Then he flew her down with her from the tree and placed her on a daisy, and she wept at the thought of being so ugly that even the beetles would have nothing to say to her. And all the while she was really the loveliest creature that one could imagine and as tender and delicate as a beautiful rose leaf. During the whole summer, poor little Tiny lived quite alone in the wide forest. She wove herself a bed with blades of grass and hung it under a broad leaf to protect herself from the rain. She sucked the honey from the flowers for food and drank the dew from their leaves every morning. So passed away the summer and the autumn and, the ca and then came the winter, the long, cold winter. All the birds who had sung to her so sweetly were flown away, and the trees and the flowers had withered. The large clover leaf under the shelter of which she had lived in was now rolled up together and shriveled up. Nothing remains but a yellow, withered stalk. She felt dreadfully cold, for her clothes were torn, and she was herself so frail and delicate that poor tiny, little tiny nearly froze in. To death as it began to snow and as the snowflakes as they fell upon her were like a whole shovel full falling upon one of us for we were tall but she was only an inch high then she wrapped herself in a dry leaf but it cracked in the middle and could not keep her warm and she shivered with cold near the wood in which she had been living lay a cornfield for the but the corn had been cut a long time nothing remained but the bare dry stubble standing up on the frozen ground it was to her like struggling through a large wood. Oh, how she shivered with the cold. She came at last to the door of a field mouse who had a little den under the corn stubble. There dwelt the field mouse in warmth and comfort with a full room full of corn, a kitchen and a beautiful dining room. Poor little Tiny stood before the door just like a little beggar girl and begged for a small piece of barley corn for she had been without a morsel to eat for two days. You poor little creature, said the field mouse, who was really a good field mouse. Come into my warm room and dine with me. She was very pleased with Tiny, so she said, You are quite welcome to stay with me all the winter if you like, but you must keep my rooms clean and neat and tell me stories, for I shall like to hear them very much. And Tiny did all the field mouse, field mouse asked of her and found herself very comfortable. We shall have a visitor soon, said the field mouse one day. The neighbor pays me a visit once a week. He is better off than I am. He has large rooms and wears a beautiful black velvet coat. If you could only have him for a husband, you would be well provided for indeed. But he is blind, so you must tell him some of your prettiest stories.